Welcome to the second video of the Ethereal Mechanics video series. This is the first part of the video on light, the Great Displacement Caper. Uh, now this presentation is uh, more appropriate for scientists and engineers, but you average common folk may be able to follow. Uh, I think you'll get the gist of it anyway. Um, uh, the third video after this uh, will bring things back down to a more uh, simple level. Let me introduce you Maxwell's uh, equations. These are the equations in point form. Uh, we're not going to discuss all of these, and, and for you people out there that, that aren't scientists, engineers, don't worry, most people that graduated uh, from a university only get about as much as what I'm going to show you. They're, they just pass this under them, say these are Maxwell's equations, Maxwell's great, don't question Maxwell, and that's pretty much what everybody remembers when they graduate from either a scientist or engineering college. Uh, but what we're going to cover today in this video, we're going to cover this equation here. In, in special, what we're going to look at is this is Maxwell's displacement current term. Um, between this term and this term, or these two equations, Maxwell derived the, the plane wave equation, which is the model for light and radio that we use today. So let me put that off to the side. We're not going to go into that right now. So we're going to cover Maxwell's displacement current today in this second equation, in that third equation. Let me give you a little background. Uh, most matter is comprised of positive and negative charges. And when I move a, char a negative charge off and, and uncover a positive charge, that would be like the current, and this returning line would be what would Maxwell called the displacement current. Uh, for simplicity, though, I'm just going to draw it something like this. I'm going to draw a circle to represent the uncovered charge. Uh, a dot where the charge ended up, and then I'm going to use a different color ink to uh, represent the displacement current returning. So let's go on. The way Maxwell derived the displacement current term, he basically used a very simple circuit, which is nothing more than a capacitor and an inductor, which is basically a loop of wire and two conductive plates. That's all, that's all he used for his uh, thought experiment here. And so what Maxwell said, well, gee, you know, when we take charge off of plate A and we move it around, this really goes through the wire. I'm showing it outside for the case of simplicity here. And we bring it to the other charge, to the other plate, then there's got to be a displacement current that goes through from A to I'm sorry, I should have left that open. Um, and then so what he did was is, uh, he took a, a theoretical barrier, and we'll represent the theoretical barrier with magenta, and he placed that barrier between the plates of the capacitor and he counted all of the red line, mathematically counted all of the red lines and he found that the number of red lines that went through the imaginary barrier were equal to the current in the loop I and so he called that the displacement current ID and then so what he did is he said well then the since the current, well, I could use this rule here, the left hand rule since the current, using the left-hand rule, creates a magnetic field, and that would be going into the loop here, shown by the tails of arrows and arrowheads on the outside of the loop, because it's coming up on the outside but going down on the inside, then the displacement current must also contribute the same um, effect of the magnetic field, which is basically we're going to say H, or B in this case. Uh, just so you know, H and B are essentially the same. They're both representative of a magnetic field. They're just pretty much off by a constant. Okay, so uh, from that, Maxwell took this equation here, which was normally this before, which said that the magnetic current was the magnetic curl about a uh, current density was the only thing we knew before Maxwell added this to include the displacement current to the entire description of the contribution to a magnetic field. Okay, fine. So let's go take this one step further. Let's take our, our little magnetic uh, loop here and let's open it up. Okay, and let's uh, take a uh, charge, let's move a charge from plate A to plate B. Okay, and that would require a displacement current to come back. So this would be our I going up and our displacement current coming back. Now a lot of you antenna engineers are probably heading off 
to request a, re, uh, a refund on your college education because you know exactly where I'm going with this, and then your ID coming back. Well, let's take these plates here and let's refashion these plates into what looks like a dipole antenna. And so if I take a charge off the A plate, of the pole of the dipole antenna, which is a capacitive and inductive element, and I bring it up to the B plate, then there has to be a displacement current coming back. Okay, so if the current in the loop goes this way and the displacement current goes this way, then the contribution of the current gives us a magnetic field that curls in this direction and the contribution of the displacement current gives us a magnetic field that curls in that direction. Therefore, and if they are equal and opposite, which they are, then a dipole antenna cannot uh, radiate energy into space. So Maxwell's displacement current makes a dipole antenna not work. And I know from experience that dipole antennas work. Now some of you are saying, well, gee, you know, how did we get all this way with the science and technology if this was wrong? Well, what I'm going to show you in another video that the models that we actually use for light, and that's in more than every, pretty much every textbook you can find, are very, very different than Maxwell's equation for light. And we're going to get into that in another video. I'm not going to go into detail here. But we'll show that in the next video or the, or the video after that. I forget which one. So, okay, so let's say you're not happy with that. Well, we can go on. Um, oh, yeah, the other reason, too. The reason why um, mankind is pretty good at making stuff work in spite of the fact that he has no idea how it works. Like, mankind was able to use fire for 20,000 years to heat his home and burn down the homes of his enemies. He had no problem that he didn't know how it worked. So let's go on and, and cover this a different way. Remember, Maxwell it put an imaginary barrier between the plates of the capacitor to count the inductant, the, the D lines that go through. Well, it really, if we take away the artifact of the capacitive plate and the wire, then I'm going to show you it really doesn't matter where we put our imaginary line. That means that the displacement current is not just at, at the capacitor, the displacement current completely goes all the way around. Oh, sorry, wrong color, so what? So that means that the that means that the magnetic contribution in the wire is not just the regular current, it's also the displacement current, which means that a wire should produce twice as much magnetic field as we actually measure in the lab if the displacement current term in Maxwell's equations are true. Now you say, well, that's a, that's a pretty quick thing to jump at. That's not a very rigorous derivation. Okay, fine, let's do it rigorously then. You guys are all about rigorousness. So let me put this guy off to the side. So let's use Gauss's law. Gauss's law says that a current density is equal to the divergence of, a, of an electric field. So well, we can write this equation. This is a fancy notation for a partial derivative of the, the D lines in three space. We're going to use Cartesian coordinates here. But since we're only concerned about the, we're going to call this the x direction. And since we're only concerned about the D lines that are going in the x direction through the imaginary plane, and again, it doesn't really matter where we draw the plane here, then we can throw away these terms here. We can ignore them. And that leaves us with the current density in a wire, uh, a filamentary wire is equal to, or is equal to or the current density is equal to the derivative of the flux lines in the x direction with respect to x. Okay, now if we take that, we multiply using the chain rule of, 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 of differential calculus, we multiply both sides by dx dt, these dx's cancel, leaving us with a, a, a displacement current term. And over here, we have a current, uh, sorry, charge density multiplied by a velocity that is equivalent to a current density in the direction of x. But because this works in the direct x direction, it must work in all directions. So we can go back to a very generic uh, term. And what this says is this says the current in a wire, and this is, of course, the point term, but it, it, it works for that too, that the current in a wire produces a displacement current equal to the current in the wire, just like it does through the capacitor, because like I showed you before, it doesn't matter where you draw the line. So if we were to take just a loop of wire, okay, the loop of wire then, the, the magnetic field contribution of just a plain old loop of wire, which looks like this, 
if we were, there was a current in that, then the magnetic field contribution of that current of that current in the wire is going to be J plus a displacement current created by J. And since we know that that's equal, then we get a magnetic flux equivalent of 2J. And this result is unacceptable because this says Maxwell's equations predict over unity. And over unity is not something I accept. All right, so again, recap. The displacement current addition is inconsistent with the dipole antenna operation. It causes an over unity condition for wire loops. Now, a little disclaimer, I think Maxwell's on the right track, and, and we'll cover why, but uh, the exchange between the E and the M field is logical. However, the execution, uh, because he wanted it to be true, he basically committed a lot of crimes in mathematics. Um, and we're going to show you another way that we can get a plane wave equation without violating the, the, the models that we have for electronics. Um, so, uh, for all you people, um, we need donations, so if you're going to go online and sell your James Clerk Maxwell action figure with the Kung Fu left-hand rule grip, then uh, I'm sure you can send some of the proceeds to, to, to me to help out. You can go to distinti.com. There is a donate button. I'd appreciate your help. Thank you. Uh, the next video is going to be on the, the other term in Maxwell's equation that is responsible for light. Thank you.